Hi, me and welcome onto the podcast. Being a fan of Married at First Sight, it's a pleasure to chat and have you on today. How are you after all the attention I imagine you'll have been getting recently after appearing on the show? Yeah, no, listen, first and foremost, Baker, thanks for giving me an opportunity to come here. Right, I love yeah. podcasts. Yeah, I, I really do. I know the pressures that come with and it's it's just good to meet different people, you know, and and, and, and actually talk the thing. So this is good fun. Um, It's crazy. It's a crazy process. It's a crazy experiment. And um, so is the attention. Since coming off the show, you know, people like recognizing me, especially like, like mums and daughters and that when I'm going <laughs> shopping and that, it's like Kwame. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's, it's great, man. It's great. And I love it. I love every bit of it. I think the toughest part is keeping stum, keeping secrets yeah. and not giving away what's to come. Do you know what I mean? So have you been asked for any pictures yet out in public? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been asked loads of pictures. Sometimes I actually need someone else to pull me away because, <laughs> yeah, literally there's like a queue of people, but I love it. I love meeting people. Um, I love the attention. It's funny because a lot of people say they don't go on this for the attention. They're going to look just for love. But I think it's very, it's almost impossible to say you're going on, I mean, E4, one of the most popular yeah. channels. You're going on there, you're giving away your life, your personal self, and if you're charming, people are going to want to know more about you. You're going to draw that attention. So it, it comes with it, mate. So, no, I love it. So you touched up on there about keeping a secret is the hardest part. Do you tell your, of course, families will know the outcome, but close friends, do you tell them what's happened or are they waiting to see for themselves on the show? Yeah, like, you know, it's... It's so much fun watching people suffer <laughs> yeah. to know, do you know what I mean? So like I have, and it's so funny because these are people who are your friends who talk to on a regular basis. So they'll just ask you like in normal conversation, you know, and, and, and you'll be chatting and you'll be like, well, I'm not going to tell you anything. you got to watch the show. But do you know what the funny thing is? When you do say that, people respect it. And they're yeah. like, oh, all right, all right. I just... I ain't got no patience. I just want to know now. Do you know what I mean? I want to know how it ends. And you're like, what's the show, man? See it to the end. So, after all of that, we're going to go right back to square one now when you mm -hmm. decided you... what? For, like, This is a question. What made you apply to be on Married at First Sight UK, this series? I'm absolutely nuts, mate. That's what made me decide <laughs> to do it. Do you know what? I'm, um, I've, been, I've been married before. I've been divorced. I've got two kids. And, um, you know, they approached me. I'm quite active on social media. It was a little bit different for some of us um, yeah. to the majority is that some of us were approached. So a lot of people actually applied and have wanted to go on. I was actually DM'd, um, by, you know, because they have people that go out, scouts, if you like, that look for people. So, yeah, I was actually DM'd. And it was like, Kwame, you know, we've been through your profile. This was on Insta. We think, you know, coming on such an experiment might be something that's good for you. It might be fitting. Are you looking for love? And at first, Baker, I was like, hell no. Do you know what I mean? I don't even <laughs> really, the most reality thing I might watch is Top Gear, bro. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? I'm like, no. And then, I, you know, I actually put a poll up on my gram. And 80% of my followers were like, go for it. 20% were like, don't sell your soul to the devil and all of that jazz. Do you know what I mean? So I just kind of thought, when am I going to have another, another opportunity like this? I'm single, I'm free, I'm self-employed. So I could probably balance things up as long as they cover like loss of income and all of that stuff. So yeah, I, I, I went for it, you know, but don't get it twisted. Like leading up to the date, I was like, what am I doing? This is dumb. Like, I wanted to say no and pull out. So was it was it a decision then that was really, you really had to think about to whether, as to whether you wanted to do it or not? No, absolutely. I think, you know, there's the first part where you think, yeah. And then when you start getting the official administrative parts of it, you know, you start really looking at how long am I going to be away from home? You know, what about work? Um, I can't tell nobody, you know? And then you start obviously thinking, am I ready to like be on national TV? And what can come from that? 
And, and obviously, like everybody, Baker, you're going to think about the negative. If I come across in a certain way, am I ready to be chastised by the public? You know, yeah. like Twitter, on street. You hear some real horror yeah. stories. And, you know, there is also the aspect of mental health. You know, we've heard some sad stories. I think people yeah. from Love Island and that, you know, you come off and, and it, it, it can be deep. So those are the things I really started thinking about. But there's great support. There's therapists. And, you know, I think if you're in a good place mentally in your life and yourself and you're confident in yourself and you're true to yourself, it's all right, mate. So if, 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 if we fast forward to now, are you happy that you went ahead with it and everything, given how the reception has been so far? I, d I don't know if you followed me on Twitter or seen some of the stuff that's been said, but Best believe there are some days, Baker, I'm like, wow, I this was a mistake. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I should have just found myself a woman the conventional way. But um, no, honestly, I love it. And there's no regrets. If I if I were if I had a time machine, I'd do it again. Because yeah. it's it's I think you only live once, man. And I go by this motto that when you're 70 years old and you're looking back in your life, you're gonna rather re you I would want to regret the things I did rather than the things I did it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's the not knowing. Like, oh, I, if honestly, if right now I'm watching it on E4 and I never went for it, I'll be sitting with regret. Like, I, I should have gone for this. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so I'm really, that's I'm, absolutely. Yeah. You, you've got to take these chances while, while, while they're coming at you because imagine like years to come, your family tree and look down the line and say, oh, look at what Kwame did however many years ago. How mad must he have been? Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How crazy. And, you know, it, it's been it's been funny, actually, as well, because there's a lot of um, issues that have come on the show that are really relatable to a lot of people. You know, yeah. um, it, it, it sparked deep discussions. You know, uh, my story is a case where I want to take things slow. I'm not trying to yeah. rush into intimacy. And it's not common for a guy to say to a lady, uh, I'm not ready right now for sex. Let's call yeah. it a spade yeah. a spade. Yeah. We're, we're known for, especially like a black baller dude with a beard, you expected, what, a nice big round bottom in your face and you're saying, no, are you, what's wrong with this dude? You know, and I've been called all sorts of things, but it's actually, a lot of men are relating and saying, no, sometimes as a man, we do want to take things slow. Not because we don't want the intimacy, but we want to be sure. We want to be in the right place because, you know, some of us have had relationships where we've hurt the lady, we've hurt our partner because we rushed into things. So it's really sparking a conversation of double standards and, you know, look at what happens when a guy says no to a woman. But yet it's common practice a woman says no to a man and it's like, oh, okay, I'll wait as long as you want, babe. 30 days, don't rush. And if you do rush, you're a predator, you're this, you're that. So I love the fact that set aside from everything else, it's really sparked some uh, um, interesting conversations that are issues, I think, in society. So do you feel like you can almost, because people have been watching you on the TV, you can sort of help people with the way that you've been and then they can look at you and then think, well, right, right, he's done it, so... There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what's right. So, yeah. That's right. So, yeah. Absolutely. I think, you know, there's it's some really strong characters in this season. And I think um, a lot of the, uh, everybody's kind of in their own way. You know, Duke is his way. Whitney's her way. You know, Gemma's her way. George is his way. And I think if you own it, you own your characteristics because you're being yourself, whether it's right or wrong, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be like, what are you doing? But there's also a lot of people who are probably just like you yeah. in a similar position and are, you know, admirable of how you're handling it. And I think it's not just being strong-minded in being the way you are. It's how you also handle it, not crumbling to the pressure and being like, do you know what? This is what I believe is right. And I think that's what people will watch and see and go, do you know what? I'm inspired by that chap or by that lady because that's me. Uh, and, and so, you know, hopefully it's a positive thing. Obviously, if you're doing something that's really bad and horrible and you're inspiring people, yeah, 
let's not talk about that. <laughs> that's yeah. not what that's not <laughs> what we want to push. But it, it, of course, that's part and parcel of it. So of course, but like you say, you're absolutely going to have many different characters. Yeah. But we're going to uh, just talk about your first wedding day now. Yeah. So leading up to that day, how were your nerves, Kwame? Mate, it, I was, I was bricking it. I, I honestly, you know, you again, it's the the realness comes into play. You know, your suit turns up, you're putting on your suit. The day is now drawing near, you know, four days away, two days away. Oh, my God, tomorrow. Oh, my gosh, one hour. And and you really start thinking about how crazy this is because you're not just meeting a person, you're, you're meeting a family. Them. Yeah, and you're marrying them. And, you know, you, you've got your family and your friends. Everyone's, it's not just you that's involved. You've got other people involved. You know, I, I've got two daughters. You know, so it's it. There's the aspect of I've got to kind of explain to them, daddy's going to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, yeah, it's 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 crazy, dude. It's crazy. And next I'm, thing you know, you're turning around and you're looking at your bride, or for the yeah. for the ladies, uh, that, looking at the husband. Yeah, that that's what I was always. I think it always must be the most nerve wracking on the groom side of things when when you've got to go and. When you're the first one walking and you're stood in front of your family and your partner's family, both families don't know each other. Right. You don't know their family, and then you're right. waiting for them to turn around. Right, right. And you're you're literally your back's turned to, to everybody. Do you know what I mean? You've got yes. both families on either side, your back's turned, you're hearing them chatting. And as you could see, um, from the um from from our episode of our wedding, you know. Her family were like, oh, they they look a bit small. <laughs> so if if he's anything like them, they're a bit small. And you're like, cringe, you know what I mean? And imagine you even hear that whilst you're stood up there. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it's, it's, it's intense, mate. It's intense. How long is it between you standing there and the bride arriving? I do think it varies for everybody. You know, brides fashion are fashionably late. Um... I would say it wasn't too long. I'd probably say I was probably up there about 20 minutes. That's, but that's yeah. A, that's a long time for them nerves to be. Dude, on it's a long time, you know. I, and I was blessed because I had a lot of my close mates who I call my brothers there. So they were talking to me. And I think there was an instant gel between the families. Yeah. You know, like even before I walked in, I heard them, you know, catching jokes, and I think laughing. I think that always breaks the ice, which is a fantastic Big time. thing. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Like, I, I watched uh, Jonathan and Sophie's wedding, and they they didn't look like they had that. No, you know? they, they, they didn't. Right? That looked that, like a lot of judgment was going on, a lot of cold stalemate, and walking into that, that's not easy. So I, I was quite, kind of blessed in that sense. So let's talk about when Keisha walks down the aisle. What were your initial thoughts on... Was she your type on paper or have you got a particular type on paper? Yeah, see, this this caused a huge conundrum, Baker, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, so before you go on to the experiment, they ask you what your type is. What you don't know is that they're going to play what you said as your missus, you know, when it's airing. They're yeah. going to play what you said as your woman is, is <laughs> walking down the aisle. You know, so you look like a complete <laughs> tosser if what you said prior to meeting your partner has no bearing with. But no, honestly, when I turned around and I saw her for the gorgeous woman, there's a lot they didn't show. You know, she was actually talking as she walked up the aisle. You know what I mean? She was, because she didn't like her ring. She didn't like her ring, so she was talking about that. And um, I actually found that funny because it kind of broke the yeah. ice. And it, um, it let me know. Bit... Yeah, a bit of character. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, okay... She's definitely not shy. She's outspoken. And I could hear everybody like, oh, my God. You know, because she's like, I don't know who got me this ring. I don't like it. Da -da -da. And I, but obviously, some of my friends and family were like, oh, my God. Who is Kwame being given? You know, this woman's, she don't mince her words. But honestly, I, I, was, I was happy. And there was a lot that I had mentioned. You know, I said I wanted a shapely woman. I wanted somebody who goes to the gym a lot. But for me, Baker, it was more about personality. Yeah, sure, absolutely. That's a massive thing. 
that that was that was the main thing for me because I'm I'm like 42. So I've done the whole day in what they called Instagram models, the stereotypical type and visuals. That doesn't really bring longevity. That alone, it helps, but that alone doesn't give longevity. So I wanted somebody who was more about personality. What are you like? Because I know what a real marriage or a long-term relationship consists of. That was more the buy-in. Of course, it's great if she looks good as well, and, and she did. You know, so, obviously, the wedding day went well. I think, I think you'd agree. But um, there was that little awkward encounter at the table uh, with you and her, with some, some of her family, siblings and parents. I think it was. How, was. how was the wedding day for you? And then how was that moment? Do you know what? I'm going to be honest with you, bruv. It was off the chain. It was brilliant. You know, um, like, I don't know if you saw George's stories today because he had a bit of a difficult night last night. And, you know, I hate to be the guy, I don't like saying it, but you are edited, you know. I mean, we, 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 us as viewers, we see one hour. Of right. How long, and how long and, and out, of, out of that one hour, you're, you're shown, I think, it's probably about 20 minutes, if that. Yeah. yeah. And it's a whole day. There was vibes. Our family's got. We did the candy dance. Do you know the candy, where you where you're doing that and and you're doing the little boogie as a group. We did the soul train where one person comes out and does a move and another person. There was so much vibes. I had like a half an hour conversation with the granddad, uh, with the maid of honor. But they they showed that one part. Do you know what I mean? And 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 to be honest. I was so relaxed at that point. I, I mean, I was nervous because I had the whole family talking to me, asking me questions. You know, even the sister was like, you know, you're talking a lot about yourself. And I'm I'm just looking at the whole table and I'm thinking, where are my friends? Where's yeah. my family? <laughs> like, where, where are the people to back me up? Back me up, you know, and, and, and just take the pressure off. They were missing up, busy having drinks and food. So it, it, it was a bit of pressure in that sense. But this was like towards the end. So I was just like, like, oh, now that we've done the wedding, now I know we've got on. Clearly, we've got a good link up here. We're all good. So it was like, do you know what? I just want a holiday now. Do you know? I just, oh, I'm just that, really yeah, I, I remember that comment. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to us just going on holiday. But I didn't say us. As I said, first and foremost, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a holiday. So I've got no excuse for me saying that. It came across wrong. I didn't mean I wouldn't go on TV just to get a holiday. Like <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's that's just that's just deep, man. Do you know what I mean? But that's how it goes, and and that's what you've got to be ready for when you go on on, on reality TV. That some things can get taken out of context, and you get judged by that. So yeah, it was it was a wrong comment. It was taken the wrong way. Um, and and the funny thing is, we had a great honeymoon as well. Great, more that deeds. That brings me on, actually, because I want to speak about the honeymoon now. Obviously, it comes very soon after the wedding. and it, You're going to be spending a lot of time in each other's company when, let alone being married, you haven't even known each other that long. So how is that spending the honeymoon? Dude. That much time together after not knowing each other for very long. Yeah, it's literally, once you've done the I do's, you're like this. Until you leave the process. It's literally like this. Like you walk off together, you've been used to being on your own. Even if they're doing any filming, it's you on your own. Now you've met your your, your partner, you're now being filmed together, you know? And um, it's, it's, you said soon after, it's the next day you're flying off. So you go to bed that night, you wake up in your honeymoon suite, right, boom, straight to the airport on the plane, yeah. So, um, and because we went to Maldives, I don't know specifically how many hours, but we, we, we flew to Frankfurt, dropped off there, went to Singapore, dropped off there, and then went to Maldives. So I think we were probably traveling for about 23 hours, three different planes. And so by the time we reached Maldives, we knew each other, you know. Uh I was, I was going to say, actually, what, what, what is that like, all that time flying when you've only met the day before? No cameras on, of course. How is that with the other person? Are you getting to know each other more, just like talking about general interests in life and everything? Right. 
it, it's it's real. It's good because, you know, like you said, the cameras are off. You're just sat there and um, you're flying with the camera crew that are quite close to you. But, you know, it, we I don't know if for other people, but there's a bit of, you know, they're on like maybe aisle 17. You're on aisle 21 and you're just together. So we, we had a great opportunity to really like talk and really get to know. And honestly, if you're doing that length of a flight and you don't get on, or it's a bad match. Yeah, that's that could be that could be tricky. You know, I would have loved to see Whitney and Duca doing oh. that flight <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah, that would have been oh. that would have been a test. But um, no, we we were quite fortunate. We really got on, and it helped because it then meant by the time we we arrived, there was rapport. There were, it, it, it didn't feel so much strange anymore. At least someone you you know, I could close my eyes at night. I know I'm okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean that that's absolutely massive. If um, you've got that with Paul, you're going on a honeymoon, feeling uncomfortable, so to say. But like oh, you man. said, I I'd have loved to have seen Whitney and Duke on that. Oh, bro! <laughs> it would it would have been it would have been an interesting flight to say the least. You know, because there was a lot. We we actually had cancellations. Yeah. So because oh, when was this filmed actually? So we it was like um, early part of the year, so like April. Yeah, there was a lot of cancellations. Yeah. So yeah, they, I mean, you know, it wasn't e it wasn't even like due to any COVID or whatever. It was just one of those things, you know. The initial flight was late, so it meant the connecting flight left before us. We got there, so that meant a lot of sitting in the airport. So I remember saying, I mean, they didn't show this on. Um, on the honeymoon but I remember saying those things helped because it let me see what are you like under pressure I don't know yeah, if you absolutely do you know what I mean I don't know if you've travelled with a lady or your partner before and travelling says a lot not just being on the holiday but how they prepare how they deal with cues potential delays man stressed. stress yeah. you know so that was really, and I remember her saying that normally she would have been quite, you know, infuriated by the way certain things were happening. But I really gave her a calming vibe, you know. So, so that was really good. And I think for her, she she liked that initially. Like, you know what? He's cool because I just was just calm. Like, Look, we're gonna get there. It is what it is. Let's get let's get something to eat. Let's go through duty free and go shopping. You know, let's walk around rather than sitting there thinking. Say, do you know what I mean? So, um, it, it, yeah, we really got to know each other through that. So, of course, um, that, that that's a massive thing. Um, in the the honeymoon itself, I'd say it was like for, for you two, it was a, it was it was two sides to it, sort of because yeah, I, I, I think the from the viewer's point of view, the friendship level was great, and you clearly got on. But there was a bit of a difference between she wanted to rush into things and you didn't, which sort of Create a little bit of a divide at the start for you too. How how did you yeah. find that yourself, Quan? Yeah, do you know, I think if you when when you if you watch it back, what you will notice is a lot of the divide was mentioned privately. You know, yeah. when she was when she was speaking to the public, if you like, just one on one. But when we were together, there wasn't that pressure. It's not like we were sat there together and it's like, come on, jump my bones what are you doing? You know, there was actually an understanding, you know, I think from, from the initial night when we landed, you know, I, I made it clear that, look, do you know what? I, I want to take my time. And, and, and it, it wasn't that deep, you know, there was, first and foremost, we were in a, an amazing holiday, an amazing apartment. There was so many things to do, you know? Um, so we, we actually had a lot of fun. It was just, probably those few moments where it was like we would discuss it like look do you know what i'm i'm in this place and then i'm there going yeah well i'm not quite there but you do understand where i'm coming from and it was like all right you know but obviously i'm i'm watching it back and it's like oh wow you you were quite vocal about what you wanted so it wasn't so much to me but obviously when you're watching it when you're watching it as a viewer it looks like that was the big divide and I just think that's what was focused on a lot with our our partnership. 
Do you know what I mean? But like you said, great, great friendship, great understanding. Um, I think the main problem came when I had to explain it publicly at the dinner party. Yeah, That's yeah. In front of all of the other couples. In front of everyone else. Because yeah. it's one thing, you know, if, even as a guy, do you know what I mean? If a lady says to you, do you know what, Baker? I, I want to take things slow, da 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 you, you might say that as, all right, cool. But saying it in front of all your mates, everyone. So uh, Thinking about their opinions and everything, what, what they're going to think. What, what are, are they thinking? Them? Right. And, and I think, I, you know, it... It was it was a misunderstanding, and um, and and you saw it, and you saw it uh, um, by her reaction. You know, she didn't take it the way I planned. <laughs> yeah, which I which I think happens to a lot of guys in relationships. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't mean something a certain way. You say it, and and you say to your mates, "What did I say wrong? What, what happened there?" Do you know what I mean? Getting your head bitten off. Ah, right, exactly, and and it's all part of growth. That's where you learn, okay, this is how it's cool to talk. This is not how. And it's all part of the learning process. So when, when, when you finish the honeymoon, before we move on to the dinner party, which I'm sure will be a big talking point, you move in together. How, how is it when you move in together? Because, of course, it's going to be normal day-to-day -day life now. You're going to see what each other would be like around the house and yeah. what, what each other get up to during the day. So how yeah. was that? Do you know, uh, through the whole honeymoon, um, all she kept saying is, I can't wait till we live together because I'm going to show you what I'm like as a wife in a place, you know, and talking about her cooking, how she likes to bake cakes. She, she, she's used to cooking for her family. So, you know, she's, she, she's neat. She likes music. So I actually was looking forward to it. And for me, I felt like this is a realistic, that's going to be a realistic yeah. thing. Even though it's challenging, that's what we're here for. The honeymoon's great, but that's really going to um, set things apart, you know. So I looked forward to it and we were quite blessed. We had a decent size apartment. Not all the apartments are the same dynamics and same size. We had one of the biggest with an indoor balcony, it was it was a good setup. So our living arrangement was 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 on top, man, and and, and it was it was good. But obviously, yes, it's always a challenge because you can't go out, you can't leave, you're always together. But I I always said, even you know that then that once I started living with, I was like, I got the best wife. Really, really. Oh, mate, yeah. Because listen, other husbands would come to my apartment for food, like yeah. you could. You could smell the di you could smell the dinner on the corridor, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was... and people pe people wanted a bit of that. Yeah, or I would hear what they had for dinner, and it would be like, mate, come and get some rice and chicken, man. Come and get some soup. Come and have some <laughs> banana cake. Come and have some coconut cake. Do you know what I mean? So I bet that I... made you feel good as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and you know, I've, I've had some people. I saw that on Twitter was always saying, ah. Uh, this guy just wanted to cook, do you know what I mean? Because that's all he ever talks about. But I think we we talk about things that stand out that you don't get everywhere, do you know what I mean? You know, it, and I, I, it doesn't matter what you say, people will come for you. You know, if you're talking about, oh, I love her bum, then it's going to be, oh, all you like is her physical. I love our conversations. I love her cooking. I love this. And that was a real stand-up thing. And if you think you're living in an apartment, all you can do is clean, sleep, watch TV and music, and eat. So, and not having your belly set good, you know what it's like as a dude. That can affect all the other things. Do you know what I mean? You could be moody, like uh, losing weight. You know what I mean? So it, it's, you've got a good, they say a way to a man's heart through his belly. That shows how much we love our grub, you know? It's nothing like mum's cooking or whatever. So when that's set good, the rest just falls into place. So I just wanted to mention that that there because, of course, you mentioned about what you are and what you aren't allowed to do. And obviously, we mentioned earlier about how you only see it one edited hour of the day. Sure. How, how, how does it work in the apartments? What are you allowed to do and what are you not? It, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's like stay in the yard. <laughs> you know, you can't, like, leave and, and go out. You, you might be allowed to go for a fresh air. 
and go for a walk where you're accompanied. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and, and you are responsible for your own shopping. You know, they, they can go for you, but, you know, they set the apartment in a place where you've got um, a grocery store, you know, right on the building. More oh, so, or less. You can't, so you can't escape for too long. No. Right, right. So you can go down there and do it. There's there's a gym in, in the building, so you could go down there and, and do that. So it's set up, but it's, you're contained, mate, period. So... Period. We're still at the living stages now, of course, four weeks. And how do you think you and Keisha have developed in that time? You know what? I think it was like, and it's normal, isn't it? You meet a complete stranger and it's like this. And I think at this stage is where it just started levelling off. like it's Solidifying. Okay, yeah. Solidifying, yeah. First, Firstly is building trust. What are this person's intentions? What are they about? And it's reaching that place where you go, okay, now I know, now I understand, you know. Um, and then finding that, hopefully, that meshes with where your energy is like. So I think at this stage, you know, if you watch, if, we, if we're talking like up to date, like last night's episode, you're seeing like there's a synergy now, there's understanding. Both, of us, are Both of us are smiling. And that's, that's where I wanted to get to. That's where I hoped for. So it's, it's a really good place to be. You know, especially when you're seeing other couples are having issues, you know, even even though they've highlighted the intimacy thing, that it wasn't an issue for us. A lot of the times we were smiling, dancing and having fun. So now there was a real, real good balance, man. So I was happy with that. Because I think absolutely, because I think you two are at a really good place now. And we can certainly see that from a viewer point of view. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not easy, bro. It's not easy to get there, man. Well, takes... I, can, I, can, I can imagine. I think some people on the experiment must have found that a little bit tough. Dude, I think um, the good thing is we were like a family, bro. We yeah. were proper like a family. I mean, you know, like you saw Adrian sat down with George. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, yeah, that, that, that happened a lot at mine. You know, like last night was um, what you likes and dislikes, right? So yeah. they, they didn't show it because obviously it's edited. But one of the things I said I disliked was that our, our, our apartment was like a therapy session place. You know, I would go to the gym and come upstairs and there'll be another couple or one of the couples in, in my apartment on the living room getting counseled, counseled by Keisha, you know, yeah. listening to their problems and that. And sometimes I just wanted to just come home from the gym and just, you know, get in a shower and relax and just be with my partner, you know, but there were so many people that came to us. We were the more once Richie and Lara left, we were the oldest people there. We've been through a lot. We're good at listening. We're good at giving advice. So it happened a lot. So we we supported each other a lot. There were it weren't just the three um, experts. We all supported each other. So that really helped a lot, man. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And now, I, I'm going to talk about what's probably a, a, a viewer's favourite episode of the week, the dinner parties. I mean, the, the, this season so far, I think it's safe to say that there has been the moments in every one, I think. But yeah. first of all, before we talk about the elements of them, could you talk me through the day, Kwame, and how, how it pans out and everything when you get ready and then, of course, go to the dinner party? Yeah, so, you know, you get ready at your apartment and, you know, you get picked up. You get taken to what they call the mix-up first. That's what you see when we're all sat around some drinks and that. And it's really good because even though, like I said earlier, we counsel each other and whatnot, this is an opportunity where you get to see everybody, you know, and it's like, oh, I haven't really seen you much this week. I haven't, you know, seen you. So it's, it's, really, it's a nice catch-up. You've been stuck with your partner all week that's why i always used to find it funny when the experts would say when we see you sat down at the dinner party you seem good but then you go over there and your missus goes over there and it's like yeah we've been together all week Wait, this so do, is... you not, do you not see the other couples during the week so you might see them but it's it's you know you're busy you're filming you might even i might be like oh i'm gonna go and see jordan right now and it's like oh mate i'm not free i'm filming this yeah or I'm having alone time with my missus. So it's not always, this is a time when you're all just free up. There's 
beers and Prosecco. You're chilling. It's a good vibe. Everyone's dressed up, smelling, looking great. So it's a good opportunity. To, it's, it's a party. You know, that's why they call it dinner party. So it's a good chance to really like mingle and go, mate, what's good? How are you doing? You know, uh, without feeling like you're imposing, which is what you might be doing in the apartment. So, um, yeah, so you go to the mix-up. It's really good. The drinks start flowing early. It lets everyone let their hair down. You get into a good vibe. And then you go to the to the dinner party from the mix-up. And there's more drink and um, and food. And that tends to really Then the help. problems start to come out. It catalyzes the energy, man. Do you know what I mean? It all comes out. And, um, you know, but they... they there are a lot of fun parts. There's a lot of laughing. There's a lot of jokes. Like the last dinner party that went by, me and Matt did like a rap thing. You know, he was he's a really good beatboxer. Do you know those guys that can do beatboxing oh, and sound yeah. like yeah. he's amazing at it? So he was doing, he goes, Oh, right, someone told me you can rap. And I was like, Yeah. So he starts going mm, 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 doing all of that. And I'm like, right, it's on the spot. We're on the dinner table. So I start rapping. Yo, it's Matt and Jonathan. Da -da -da -da. And I just start spitting it. And we do that for about half a minute. And everyone's cheering, you know. So it was good vibes, you know. And that was that was great fun. And that's the first time I was like, no, nah, this Matt guy is a cool dude, you know. Um, but again, there's only so much they can show. And, and, and what they choose is what they choose. Do you know what I mean? But that's, course, that's pretty much how it goes. And then you're there all day. And then when you finish, you go back to your apartment, happy or sad. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that'll be different for a lot of people. Hey. Obviously, um, they can only show a certain bit and they're going to show the drama, which there has been a lot of. We, and we love the drama, don't we? We love it. We love to see it. Do you know it's what I mean? pulls in the viewers. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Imagine, That's imagine a dinner party where everyone's just getting along whistling Dixie and smiling. But, but like, you know what? I'm glad everyone's in love. People probably call it fake. They say, now they're being fake. Yeah. They're acting, you know? Um, they, they they want the drama. They expect the drama. And the drama is very easy to come up because the experiment is so intense. Even things that you probably wouldn't get wound up over normally, you will now. Because they're going to want to show the They're going to want to show the drama we don't want a dinner party where everybody's getting along. What have you? What, what What did you make of all the drama so far this series? Climbing the dinner parties. Yeah, there, there are a lot, man. There are a lot, and you know, if you notice, apart from the time when I upset my partner, um, me and Keisha were never involved in it. Yeah, because there was there was that one one moment where you said because of me, but apart from that, you 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 right. never really had much of a. Yeah, we're, we're usually sitting down thinking, what we're like Tony for the Sophie, what the hell is going on here? Because you're sitting down having a laugh, talking with someone, the next thing you hear it, you think, oh, you, and you're looking up like, what sparked that off? You know, um, I'm, I'm like a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm calm, don't get me wrong, I can have my moments, but, you know, a lot of the times we, we weren't involved, do you know what I mean? Which or so were trying to calm things down like dude come on it's not that deep so um <coughs> yeah but there's loads more to come there's loads more for you to see yeah. so you might be having a different conversation with me who knows uh coming coming forward <laughs> so uh, of course we look forward to all of the rest of the dramas yeah the most what i was gonna obviously we touched on socializing at the dinner parties and everything but it's if you look at the experiment as a whole, obviously people are going to be closer to people than they are others, but is there any friends you feel you've made for life? And oh, mate. People you feel you grew closest to on the experiment? Closest mate is Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. Love him. He, he, we, when, when, when I first went on the, um, the first time, you know, the stag. Yeah. He was the first person there. And I was the second person to walk yes, in. That, that, that right. Was, yeah. Right. So we we were forced to conversate there. And it was so relaxing. I'm I'm like a big brother to him. That's what he was saying. And yeah. we, you know, we probably said we love each other more than we did to our partners. Yeah. You know, we yeah. proper got on. 
looked out for each other, which is why, you know, the other commitment ceremony when he had that issue with, with, with Shanita. Oh, and you kept... jumped in and said, don't diagnose him. Right, you know what I mean? Because that was my mate, man. I was just you like... You want to have his back because he, he'd, ha he'd have yours ultimately, wouldn't he? Right, ultimately, exactly. So, yeah, no, number one, um, Jordan... Um, I say from the books, number one was Jordan. From the ladies was Jenna. You know, yeah. we're and and we we talk, we're we're like really close. Um, but yeah, lot I love with PJ and PJ going well. Duca, George, we were both like. There's times when I was like, come and talk to Uncle Kwame or Doctor Kwame, yeah. and sometimes he was like, come and talk to Uncle George. So yeah. we had that. Richie, I you, honestly like I got on with literally everyone. I got on with everyone, Which even great, darling Whitney. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I think that's why a lot of people felt they could come and talk to me and Kate because we were just impartial. We were just there, so we were cool with everyone. But the closest dude, definitely Jordan. That and. I I I I'm actually based down Teesside way, and oh sweet! I, I I know Jordan's only up up the road from Darlington, isn't he? So. There you go. Oh, Darley, you know what? I need to go down and see him. When I'm down there, I'll send you a message, man. Oh, you come and have a drink with us, bro. I, absolutely, I'm I'm all up for it. So give us a shout when you're down I, there. I listen. I hundred percent will. You can hold me to that. He's a, he's such a cool dude, and I need to go and. Check out his town anyway, man. He's a superstar there, isn't he? <laughs> check, check, check out Darlington. Good old Darlington. Check out Darlington. I'll be like, what the <laughs> hell is this, mate? <laughs> da Darlow life. Darlow life, <laughs> yeah. He talks about it all the time. Bless him. Yeah, awesome. So if 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 we're talking about how we are now, five weeks in, into the experiment, if you had to pick one standout moment from it so far, what would you say has been your highlight? Oh, the wedding was the highlight. Um, the stag was the highlight for real. Cause that was that was actually the first moment that was like, Jesus Christ, this is happening. And meeting, but it was so comforting meeting other people that were just as crazy as I am, you yes. know. Um, so that was really good. And uh, what's coming next? That was definitely a standout moment. Oh, that's that, on on Monday. That that's going to be a good episode where all yeah. where, where all the grooms get together and all the brides get together. I'm sure. I'm, right. sure, I'm sure we'll get some sort of drama coming out of that episode. You, you, you're gonna get something. I'll tell you that. But, you but, just know it's gonna happen. Yeah, you just. I mean, they they shown some clips of it, but it was um, yeah, it was definitely that. So this stag meeting other people that are doing something as crazy as you guys as well. Um, and then the wedding, because you want that to go well. And that went amazingly. Who I, who they paired me up with and her family as well was really good. And seeing both of our families get along, that was really good. The honeymoon was, you saw people got different locations and different and apartments. You, and You probably got the creme de la creme. I, I would honestly, I'll hold my hand up and, and, you know, I literally said to the producers, thank you, because... Yeah. I, I couldn't, I was like, if anyone's got a better spot or place than us, like, I want to see it. It was out of this world, mate. Um, so, so many standout moments. And then, yeah, what's coming um, next week's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting, mate. <laughs> Kwame, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat. Thank you so much for coming on. No, oh, it's a pleasure. This has been fun, mate. This has been fun. I think we do, we should do one again, man. Absolutely. I'll tell Feel you what, free. what, what, what. Why don't we agree to do something after the series is finished? Then Say we less. Then we I'm on it. Then we can go from there. No, I'm on it, mate. We'll do that, man. We'll do that. Pleasure, my man. <laughs>